Hello guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam. Welcome to Booktober where I post one video or do a live sprint every day of the month of October. I gotta say, <laughs> I like doing Booktober. Um, maybe a bit off a little bit more than I chew, but with that said, um, I will get that uh, deep dive up for you guys soon for Legendary. I kind of want to close out the whole series like this month, but they take a lot of juice to make and today I just simply don't have the spoons in me right now. I tried filming it but my energy was so low that I just it didn't seem like it was going to be fun uh, watching experience so I've decided we can unbox some things instead that's always fun and I can be a little bit more chill and just like hang out with you guys for a bit. So with that said that's what we're gonna do. I'll start with my aardvark which I've already opened. I opened this on sprints with Eliza because she was curious. Um, Aardvark is like book of the month. It's a monthly subscription. They're $17.99 a month, but if you don't spend the credit, it just stacks up and then you can just order things when you're ready. Um, this month we got a cool two year fresh ears bookmark, a little like holographic plastic bookmark. It's very nice, very cute. I definitely will get more use out of this than the like paper ones simply because the ears always bend and I get so sad but this one is a nice bookmark that I am excited about. And then the book that I chose for this month was This Cursed House by Dells Sandine. Some things are best left buried. In this it says that it is a southern gothic horror debut. A young black woman abandons her life in 1960s Chicago for a position with a mysterious family in New Orleans only to discover the dark truth. They're under a curse and they think she can break it. I haven't seen much about this. I haven't heard a lot of reviews or anything. I just saw it and I was intrigued and I knew that it was one of the options available for Kayla's book club of November, which is like the community votes. This is not the one that we decided. I'll yeah, I'm excited. I really like horror. Um, seems right up my alley. Looking forward to it. Let's put it right here and then we can jump in to my book of the month as well. So we got the bookmark. It says, I always know my place. <laughs> And then the first book that I picked was The Dagger and the Flame by Catherine Doyle. In a deadly game of revenge, the most dangerous mistake is of all is falling in love. I am pretty excited for this. Uh, my friend Chloe started reading it already and she said that the narrator is good, especially for the male character. From my understanding, this is like two assassins coming together. In the dark underbelly of a beautiful city, two rival gang members are pitted against each other in a deadly game of duty and revenge in which the most dangerous mistake is falling in love. I'm just, oh, I love uh, romanticy right now, as we are well aware. <laughs> That's just where I'm at. Romanticy and horror is kind of my thing right now, so I'm excited to have more in the collection. And my other pick was, oh, so much smaller. <laughs> The Wild Huntress by Emily Lloyd Jones. Within these woods, trust no one. I truly don't know anything about this. Every fifth year, as harvest wane, two kingdoms meet in a wooden domain, and those who cannot hunt nor slay belong to your kings for a year and a day. Kingers, nope. <laughs> kings and beggars, trust to your aim. For the wild hunt, all are fair game. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I think it's like got that folklore feel to it. The monsters will fear me. Uh, looks like we got three perspectives, which is interesting. But yeah, I am excited for this. I have literally both other books from this author, The, the Drowned Woods and The Bone Something. So I have a lot of this author, but I have not picked any of them up. I know that they're traditionally like the more folklore, folk tale, fairy tale type of vibe, which I am interested in and excited about. So maybe I will do like a dedicated author reading vlog and I'll just... <laughs> get these three books read that might be might be a good decision all right but with those quick ones out of the way let's jump in to my owl crate adult fantasy sort of something i was expecting so i'm okay with this my fro my fro my friend exo joe showed this on sprints this is lady macbeth by ava reed i think it's a cute cover i don't know really what to expect with this one you are lady Mac macbeth queen hereafter but it's a very cute vibe very like woodland creature fantastical but with oh such stunning artwork now you are the dagger in my hand um i'll be honest i don't really know the story of macbeth very well so i feel like that might be something that i want to check out but i know that ava reed has kind of popped off this year there's been so many releases 
and I am intrigued, you will hunt me too. We can never truly apart then if we are each other's ghosts. Okay. It says, when a crown falls, many arms reach out to catch it. And on the front, we've got a dragon. It's very cool vibes. Very Shakespearean. I love this reverse dash jacket art. Absolutely stunning. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, but yeah, I'm not familiar with Macbeth, so I don't know, like, the story very well to go with this. But also, uh, Ava Reed is an author that I'm interested in and have almost picked up a few times. I keep putting A Steady and Drowning on my TBR, but my big fear is that Ava Reed often discusses SA in her books, which is fine, but I need to be in, like, the correct headspace for it, and I gotta, gotta be mentally prepared to read that. But let me read you what this one is about. This is a reimagining of Lady Macbeth, Shakespeare's most famous villainess, giving her a voice, a past, and a power that transforms the story men have written for her. The lady knows the stories, how her eyes induce madness in men. The lady knows she will be wed to a Scottish brute who does not leave his warrior ways behind when he comes to the marriage bed. Ew. The lady knows his hostile, suspicious court will be a game of survival requiring all of her wiles and hidden witchcraft to survive. The lady does not know her husband has occult secrets of his own. She does not know that prophecy girds him like armor. She does not know that her magic is greater and more dangerous, and that it will threaten the order of the world. She does not know this yet, but she will. That does not give me much of anything that tells me very little. Um, but either way, the book is pretty. I'm excited to see reviews come in before like I decide when to pick this up, but I feel like I gotta read Macbeth before this. I read Hamlet and A Midsummer's Night's Dream, Romeo and Juliet, and I think those are the only ones that I read in school. Definitely got to get on my Shakespeare era um, so that I can maybe enjoy that a little bit more. If I have a little bit more backstory, I'll, at the very least, read somebody else explain Macbeth to me <laughs> before then. But yes, it is a pretty edition. I look forward to checking it out, hearing more reviews on it, but it's not my most, like, excited pick. I also didn't know that it was adult, so that's interesting. I think Ava Reed normally sticks to the YA, which I believe that... A Study in the Drowning was an Owl Crate Young Adult pick, so interesting, interesting. Speaking of the young adult, let's jump right into it. All right, the first thing that I'm seeing is the Perfect Pairings Collection. This is September's 9 of 12, which is, ooh, A Song of Achilles. Interesting. I never pictured Achilles with, like, long blonde hair. That's probably my mistake, but it's fine. I, again, I, I just, I don't, I'm not obsessed with this pin collection. Um, they're cute. I don't care that they open. I've said all that I need to say, though. The next thing that I'm seeing is a Fire Flowers Candles, Jasmine, Vanilla, and Lang Lang. This, I'm assuming, is the Unmaking of June Furrow by Adrian Young. Ooh. No, that smells very nice. It smells very autumnal. Ugh, I love candles. I wish that they gave us more candles. Like, give me big candles, too. This is nice. Let me find the spoiler card. There is no spoiler card, so... I'm going to just say that, yeah, this makes sense, uh, the making of, the unmaking of June Faro, and it looks like this is from Flick the Wick, I think that's the brand. And then next I am seeing, for those wanting to dip into the world of kings and queens, princes and princesses, we've created a collection of stunning stackable mugs inspired by beloved, beloved, <laughs> beloved royal fantasies. Display them on your kitchen counters in a stunning stack fashion. Or, and use them as you wish to sip your most elegant and regal drinks. Strike a deal with the Heart of Prince. This next mug in our collection is based on Once Upon a Bergen Heart and is designed by Lindsay Hook at Off the Hook Studios. Oh, fun, fun, fun. If, like I mentioned earlier, I'm doing a deep dive of the Caraval series, which is the one that comes right before this fun little series. So I love to see it. Oh, very cute. We've got the little foxes, the broken heart, the apples, uh, and then a little like bow and arrow situation. The inside says every story has the potential of for infinite endings. Little some broken hearts inside. Oh, cute. I like these. They're a nice size. They're not the best size. The handle's just a little too small for my liking, but that's just me. I still love the design of them. I like that they can stack. I think they'll look really cute together. Next, I'm seeing who, um, <laughs> a coin purse, I think, just like a cute little bag. 
uh, with bears and horses and pine cones and a bird. It's kind of giving the bear and the nightingale. I don't know if that's official. I don't know who made this. There's no tag and there's no spoiler card to tell you. And then the other thing that I'm seeing is a box that says, what is a person if not the marks they leave behind? Is this, yes, the invisible life of Addie LaRue. It's like a little locket with like the constellation stars. And then inside it says, I remember you. And a little space, I guess, to like put something inside. It does not lock super well and it's pretty. I think maybe if I read the book, <laughs> it'll change my mind. But since I haven't read it yet, there's not like a big use to wear a necklace like this, but it is cute. And then we have the book, which is At the End of the River Styx by Michelle Coolwicky. Oh my god, the sprayed edges are so good. I'm not a huge sprayed edges person, but it kind of is giving, um, like the Greek columns from Hercules, but also, what's the book? Uh, We Both Die in the End? It's kind of giving that vibe. And then the back with the little boat of uh, the, the, the man that takes you away in death. <laughs> the stars hold our stories. Never forget your roots. Never forget the old gods. But these sprayed edges, the books with the little cat. Oh, you're kidding me. It's so cute. I'm obsessed with that specifically. Okay, I'll just take it right off. We've got a reverse dust jacket. Then the author in synopsis. These characters are very cute. They're kind of giving um, Aiden Thomas characters. Like, this could be the Sun Bear Trials or even, like, um, Cemetery Boys, <laughs> if we're being real honest. And then the book itself, which is quite cute. Um, it says Fox Books, I believe. U.S. and collectible books. Very sweet. And the back says, I'd miss you too much if you were gone. This feels very, like, contemporary. I know it's not... But it kind of feels like it. <laughs> it's kind of giving that vibe. And then, oh, inside. I love this. Very cozy. And then the letter and signature page. And then, oh, he's all alone in the side. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this feels like it's going to be a sad book. It's kind of giving Song of Achilles. It's giving um, They Both Die in the End. I mm, don't know if I want to cry. Let's read what this is about. Is saving someone you love worth an eternity of servitude? To save his dying mother, Zan offered his life and centuries of servitude to the ferryman. For 499 years of his 500-year curse, Zayn has guided souls in the underworld to the edge of the river Styx so the ferryman can devour them. And if Zan stops before his sentence is up, the ferryman will eat his soul. In Portland, Bastion is grieving. He barely survived a car accident that took his mother, and he is haunted by troubling dreams of a dark, flooded corridor. One night, a door appears in the endless corridor, and Bastion walks into Zan's office, where he learns that he was supposed to die in the accident. It should be easy for Zan to hand Bastion over like he has countless others, only Bastion keeps disappearing before Zan can deliver him. The more they meet, the more they find they have in common, and before long, their feelings for each other deepen. After an eon of loneliness, Zan can't bring himself to let Bastion die. The boy borrows time hiding from the ferryman, but only one of them can cheat death. Zan must decide if he's willing to give up his chance at life to save Bastion, and Bastion must decide if he's willing to keep living if it means losing Zan. Zan. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I don't know how I feel about this one. It doesn't sound super like the typical book that I would pick up. I'm interested in like having the dynamic between them of like cheating death very visible invisible life of Addie LaRue Ad oh god speaking is so hard today very invisible life of Addie LaRue meets like Greek gods I, it's an interesting combo I'm definitely gonna look out for other people's reviews on this to see what how people are feeling before I pick that one up because I'm on the fence it's a very pretty book it's just, it doesn't sound like my typical go-to fantasy, you know? But alas, that was the box. It was really quick and easy to open. It's a little bit annoying that there was no spoiler card to really discuss the things in further. Um, I don't really care about the pen collection. It, I'm kind of over it at this point. I, I like the mug. I like the cup. Nope, those are the same thing. I like the candle. The locket is cool. I think fans of Addie LaRue will really dig it. Um, I'm not a big, like, necklace wearer. I really just wear the same 
silver moon necklace every day and so it's not like I'm looking for necklaces. I do like earrings though. If they want to start giving like sterling silver dangle earrings, I would wear the shit out of them. But the bag is my least favorite item from this box. I just don't see myself using this very often. But it is cute. But I have like a bajillion bags. Like I have a cubby down here <laughs> below my graphic novels. Um I have just a spot for dust jackets and books and bags. So could use a little without but let's jump into some fairy loot we've got three boxes what do we want let's make my heart a bit happier by opening the romantic box oh i just uh yeah i don't know i'm in a weird mood today and i don't know what it is okay we've got a chunky book the theme is shadowed fate and the book is the half king by melissa landers Ooh, i really like this cover um it makes no sense to me i don't know what i'm looking at but I am excited and intrigued by it. Every night at sunset, he turned to shadow. Every dawn made him whole again. Eventually, he would lose his daylight hours as well until he vanished forever. Oh, interesting. Okay, we've got the same cover on the spine. Oh, wow. Oh my god, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, no reverse dust jacket, but author and bio... Here is the naked hardback. Just says the half king. Um, very glitzy glam. I love a mask. That's exciting. And then, I don't think you're ready. Oh, that is such gorgeous art. I'm quite obsessed with that. It's so pretty. Then it's got a signature. And then a little letter to the readers. And then on the other side... Oh, this art is so pretty. It's really giving, like, it's kind of giving, like, a Kingdom Hearts Final Fantasy feel to it, just with the castle and the colors. Oh, it's so pretty. Ah! I'm really excited. Okay, let us read what this is about. I look forward to a ball scene in this. Okay. In a world where birth order determines your fate, what if everything you believed about yourself was a lie? Like all second-born daughters of the realm, Cerise Solon has never ventured beyond the temple grounds where she lives in service to the goddess, but unlike her peers, Cerise is a complete failure as an oracle. Her inability to foretell a single tragedy has brought shame upon her family, something she sees reflected in their eyes during their rare visits. Everything changes when the head seer offers Cerise an opportunity to serve the half-king, a young man who rules by day and turns to shadow at sunset. As a firstborn son, the king bears his bloodline's curse and is destined to vanish completely upon his 21st birthday. While searching for a way to restore him, Cerise finds a kindred spirit in the mysterious young ruler, and with his help discovers a startling revelation about herself and unlocks a powerful set of gifts. But the truth comes with a price, for she is no oracle, but instead the product of a union so forbidden its discovery would sentence her to death. Despite her tainted origins, Cerise might be the key to restoring order to the land and saving the man she's quickly growing to love if she can outline those sworn to destroy her. Ooh, interesting, interesting. I am intrigued. If I remember, I'll show you like this one compared to the original publishing non-special edition cover. Because <laughs> um, often I think that I've never heard of a romanticy book and then I see the original cover of it and I go oh yeah that book <laughs> so I will do that for you guys as well um because maybe that'll jog memories for us but I am intrigued this sounds pretty good I uh, I will definitely pick it up it's kind of reminding me of uh that one book that I really like the wrath and the dawn it's kind of giving that vibe but like he turns into a shadow instead of killing his wives <laughs> but now on to the just normal fantasy adult from Fairy Loot. And it looks like the theme is Power Struggles. Okay, so this is Andrea Stewart's The Gods Below. This looks very high fantasy. Is that just me? <laughs> this cover doesn't look familiar. They're like snakes, but they've got like a thing. I don't know what's going on. The back says, I. <laughs> the back says, if suffering made us strong, then I would be stronger than all of them. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we've got like snakes and gems going on on the sp sprayed edges. Okay, and then we've got Reverse. Reverse. Oh my god, I'm losing brain cells as we're filming. Reverse dust, <laughs> dust jacket, which I do like. 
I think it's very cute. She's kind of giving tiefling, though. With the horns. Interesting, interesting. Okay, okay, okay. And then the book itself. Very pretty. Just a little stone. And then the back, we've got the stone still. Very pretty overall. Not bad vibes. Okay, we're definitely going like angels and demons. <laughs> Look at those wings! <laughs> no wet signature, but there is a letter with a little signature. And then the back has our girls from the reverse dust jacket art. I am intrigued in what's going on. Okay, yeah, let's let's read what this is about, because I would like to know. The Gods Below begins an epic new fantasy series from best-selling author Andrea Stewart, where two sisters find themselves on opposite sides of a war against gods. After a divine war shattered the world, humanity struck a pact with the god Cluin in return for a regular tribute of magical gems Cluin would restore the world to its former glory. But as each land is transformed, so too are its people changed into strange new forms, if they survive at all. Hakara is not willing to pay such a price. Desperate to protect herself and her sister Rasha, she flees her homeland for the safety of a neighboring kingdom. But tragedy strikes when they're separated, and Hakara is forced to abandon Rasha to an unknown fate. But when Hakara discovers she can channel the power of the magical gems, she's invited to join a clandestine plot to destroy the God Pact. To win Hakara to their cause, the conspirators reveal a startling secret. Rasha is alive, and they can help rescue her. But only if Hakara goes to war against a god. Interesting. Yes, yeah, so this is the same author who wrote The Bone Shard Daughter, which I haven't read, but I have heard of. So it's a familiar author name at the very least. But this is interesting. I love God's meddling in day-to-day -day stuff. Like, this sounds right up my alley trope-wise. It sounds like something I could definitely be into. I also like the idea of, like, making a pact with gods. And then as the god is trying to, like, restore things, things go wrong. And people start growing goat horns. And, like, a little bit of a, like, a tiefling vibe. I don't know. I'm into it. I'm intrigued. It's so chunky, though. Um, definitely not a book that I will prioritize for this year, seeing as the months are coming to an end. But maybe next year or like truthfully when we get closer to like book two coming out maybe even book three unless it's just like so good um like god killer but yeah closer to book two coming out i'll probably try to pick this up and now we can jump into the young adult box this is such a weird mix of things because i have not heard of most of these books before getting them it's always a strange feeling so this september's theme is master mind first thing i'm seeing is a little pot warmer um, these are very nice for having soup. <laughs> Let me read you about this one. Bowl cozy designed by at Little Forest Cat. Shield your hands from the heat or cold with this gorgeous pattern bowl cozy. Featuring a design inspired by the dagger and the flame. That feels like a vibe. That feels, that feels right. <laughs> the next thing that I'm seeing is Babel Tower Tea Light Holder. Um, designed by Fairy Loot and at Blanca Designs. Oh, this is so cute. Oh, Inside it says, we're here to make magic with words. <laughs> oh, this is really cute. I'm excited. I just actually got some tea lights today, so I can stick one in here tonight and watch it glow. Okay, the next thing I'm seeing is another desk mat. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, mistake. Oh, they never smell good. I don't know why I did that. I should have known better. Okay, let's open her up, though. Oh, that's so pretty. This is so nice. This is designed by at Mono Lime Art. Take a step closer to Terrason with this stunning desk mat inspired by Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Mass. Wow, yeah. No, this is really pretty. I've never been so excited to have a desk mat. These desk mats this year have been so good. I'm so impressed with them smell awful but they look so nice okay and then we have a tempest of tea it's a replica pin designed to buy at brio and brandish infiltrate your local secret vampire society with your very own ethereum marker pin replica inspired by a tempest of tea by hafas faisal i think partly because i didn't really like the book very much i've just spaced this out but it's a cool concept i like the hidden little number <laughs> and then the last thing we've got the Page of Sun and the Knights of Sun tarot cards. They look pretty snazzy. They look pretty good. Collectible. 
of the month designed by at underscore Saint Dree. This month's tarot card set features Sarah as the Page of Suns and Ransom as the Knight of Suns, the characters from The Dagger and the Flame by Catherine Doyle. They're cute. They're nice. I like them. I like this art. I think they look very nice. And then you already know the book. Here we have The Dagger and the Flame by Catherine Doyle. What's fun is I can show you the differences. <laughs> And then on the other side, so they look pretty similar minus like the color differences. This one being black with red, that one being red with gold. Ooh. Oh, these edges are pretty though. Oh, so pretty. Okay. <laughs> and then the dagger, the flame. Oh, you already know. You already know. And then the little letter for the reader we've got a map and then the other side is a little bit more sweet oh very cute this is very good art i hope that they never stray from artists doing the actual work the moment that they start doing ai instead of actual artists is the day that i riot <laughs> and burn the city down and then we've got the reverse dust jacket which i think is very cute very nice. A little author and synopsis. It's very soft matte cover, which I do appreciate. But let me officially read to you what this is about. In fandom, a kingdom of cobbled streets, flickering lamplights, beautiful buildings, and secret catacombs, shade magic is a scarce and deadly commodity controlled by two enemy guilds, the cloaks and the daggers, the thieves and the assassins. On a night of her mother's murder, 18-year-old Seraphine runs for her life, Seeking sanctuary with the cloaks, Sarah's heart is set on revenge, but are her secret abilities a match for the dark-haired boy whose quicksilver eyes follow her around the city? Nothing can prepare Sarah for the moment she finally comes face to face with Ransom, heir to the Order of the Daggers, and Ransom is shocked to discover that this unassuming farm girl wields a strange and blazing magic that he has never seen before, a fiery enemies to lovers of romance. Ooh! Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yes, I am very interested in this, intrigued in this. Obviously, I picked it up from Book of the Month, and it's definitely a romantic book that I'm interested in. I know that it's going to give me good feels, good vibes. I really enjoy assassins in my books. I just, there's something about it. The badass female characters just do it for me. Um, when will I pick this up? I'm not really sure. I tried to snag the audiobook, but it wasn't available at my library, so I might have to hold off a little bit longer for this, but I am excited about it whenever the day comes. And then... Finally, last but not least, as always, a Luma Crate. This could either be adult or young adult. I'm not really sure. We're doing pretty good this month, though. So hopefully we can keep it up with a Luma Crate. So the month's theme is Darker Academia. And the first thing I see I'm very interested in. So here we have an Luma Crate reading prompt cards for the indecisive bookworm who has too many books. <laughs> Designed by Francisca Stern, I believe at Cover Dungeon Rabbit. I like the idea of prompt cards. I never necessarily utilize them, but I am into it. They're very simple on the back. No crazy design or anything, but then you've got just a card and each of them have different prompts. So this one says the newest book on your shelf, a book with an animal in the title, an urban fantasy setting, just fun little prompt cards. This might make for like, an interesting reading vlog or two, uh, just to get some use out of them and have a little bit of fun. But I think that these are nice for inspiration when like you're really not sure what you want to read. I typically tend to have a lot of TBRs and don't just mood read a whole lot. But for those times when I just don't know, this might be helpful. The next thing, a very hard to open thing, um, Magical Dark Academia. It's got some cards and clocks and skulls and feathers. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Foreshadowing Glasses Case, designed by JK at Creative Wannabe. Store your glasses safely in this handy case, ready whenever you need them next. Okay, that makes sense, because this top part closes like a wallet almost, <laughs> so it's very tight. So it makes sense. Your glasses will not fall out of this. Um, it's nice quality. I don't wear glasses, so I don't necessarily have a use for this in glasses term, but I can put things in here. If I ever have cash, <laughs> I'll just stick my cash in here. <laughs> Treat it like a wallet. Okay, the next thing in here is mysterious. Okay, so we have like an embossed notebook. Ooh, pretty end pages. It's very skinny. Looks like it's a weekly planner. 
undated, which is nice, so you can start using this at any point. But it's very small, won't last you for many days. There's uh, space for notes in the back. You can just set your weekly planner. That's kind of nice. Pretty cool. You got a little like habit tracker spot. Scales and Wings Task Journal, designed by Gretchen Cobal at Lichen and Limestones. Keep all your to-do lists in one place with this stunning task journal. Yeah, this is definitely something that I could get a lot of use out of. I have, oh, so many sticky notes with like things that I need to do. So this might be helpful to have like it broken out into a week. I do wish it was just like a little bit bigger so that I could have more pages just because I would use it a lot. But the next thing is the Dark Academia bookcase jigsaw puzzle, a thousand pieces. Very Dark Academia, very cute inside. It's just the puzzle pieces and then that there is the puzzle itself, um, which, you know, seems a little complex. I don't know why Dark Academia has so many animals, but I don't hate it. <laughs> cute. I don't really do puzzles, but if I did, it would be fun. The Dark Academia bookcase puzzle artwork by Olivia Gibbs at Olivia Gibbs Illustrations, designed by at Jane Tibbetts at Chatty Nora. Piece together your ideal Dark Academia shelves with our next thousand pieces bookcase puzzle. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, this is not a cover that I expected, but I'm not upset about the book. So this is a Dark and Drowning Tide by Allison, Allison Shaft, another author that I have not dabbled in, but I like the covers of their books. We got Fragile Enchantment from Alumicrate, no, from Owlcrate and Fairy Loot when that came out, and I haven't heard great things about it, but this is the Dark Academia print, ooh, <laughs> that I am interested in. I don't actually know a whole lot about it. Um, reviews, I haven't really seen a oh, whole too many either, so I'm definitely interested. Oh, yes. Okay, no reverse dust jacket art, but the hardback, oh, this is the original cover artwork. It's a little tacky to the touch, but I think I can live with it. It's so pretty. I love this artwork so much. Like, gorgeous job to whoever did the art. But inside, you've got a... I don't want to... I don't want to call it a dragon, because it's not a dragon, but... We've got an animal's <laughs> encyclopedia page. And then signature page with the reader note behind it. And then on the other side... Oh, we've got a little horse. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, fun book. Um, and the back is just blank. It's just like very simple and understated, but I kind of love it, to be honest. But let me read you guys the inside. Lorelei, Lorelei, Caskell, a folklorist with a quick temper and an even quicker wit. And Lorelai is determined to prove herself and to make her dream come true. Become a naturalist, able to travel freely to far away lands. The expedition gets off to a harrowing start when its leader, Lorelai's beloved mentor, is murdered in the quarters aboard the ship. The suspects are her five remaining expedition mates. The only person Lorelai knows must be innocent is her longtime academic rival, the insufferable gallant and maddeningly beautiful Sylvia... <gasps> Von Wolf. Now in charge of the expedition, Lorelai must find the spring before the murderer strikes again, and a coup begins in earnest. But other dangers lurk in the dark. Forests that rearrange themselves at night, rivers with slumbering dragons hiding beneath the waters, and shape-shifting beasts out for blood. As Lorelai and Sylvia begrudgingly work together to uncover the truth and resist their growing feelings for each other, they discover that their leader had secrets of her own. Secrets that make Lorelai question whether justice is worth pursuing and if this kingdom is worth saving at all. Ooh, I am intrigued. I definitely am interested. I didn't realize how, like, high fantasy this would be. Um, I kind of just thought it would be, like, a traditional, simple, like, dark academia story with, like, a hint of magic. I didn't expect, like, magical beasts or um, an expedition on a ship in a murder mystery. I am very interested in this. This sounds very fun. So, hopefully the writing... Um, stands true and keeps me engaged and happy with it. Uh, definitely a book that I'm excited to get to. I don't know when yet. That's all most of these books are. I don't know when I'm gonna get to any of them, but I am excited for them all. And again, minus the dagger and the flame, which I did know was going to happen. No duplicates. We simply just love to see it. We love to see it. it that makes me so happy. <laughs> I'm getting so many new books. Ah, oh, yes, this was nice. Um, thanks for hanging out with me. I know that my energy was kind of low, 
but I hope that you enjoyed seeing me unbox all of my new books and some of the things that came with it. I don't know if it's just like my mood or if it's just like the items are so-so. I don't have a use for a lot of these things. A lot of them will just get stored away and set aside for a later date and not be used anytime soon, which is fine. Uh, the Babel tea light holder though from Fairy Loot, I for sure am excited about. This cute little guy is gonna look so good and I am excited about showing this off. So that is my one, my one big win. So good job Fairy Loot for that. But um, yeah, that's gonna be everything for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow for my next video. It'll be a battle of the booktubers reading vlog. Oh, and it's a doozy. It's gonna be a doozy. Oh, god. Oh. <laughs> I will work on getting upbeat, positive, happy videos out to you guys very soon. Happy spooky season, though. But I will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>